What makes an astrophotography image great? I've been doing this a long time and I can tell you it depends on who you ask. What some people would consider to be the perfect image is a complete mess to others. I've spent over 10 years processing images of nebulae, galaxies, and star clusters, and I have some words of wisdom for you. These are the seven key traits every great astrophotography image has in common. Okay, this all started with me sharing my latest image of the Veil Nebula, which I thought was one of my best images yet. However, other people thought that it was way too overprocessed and had other issues as well. And you know what? They're not wrong. While there are some core aesthetics that I think most people can agree on, like nobody likes a noisy image, other aspects have vastly different opinions depending on your audience. It's crazy to see what aspects of an astrophotography image are important to some people and ruin the image for others. While I do have a lot of experience with deep sky astrophotography, I'm always looking to improve my craft, so take my advice with a grain of salt. Okay, before we go any further, I have a few disclaimers. One, the image traits I mentioned below are highly subjective, and that's the point. You may disagree with my logic, and if you do, let me have it in the comments. I can take it. Sort of. Two, this video mainly refers to deep sky astrophotography images taken with a camera and telescope. While many of the same strategies apply to nightscape and Milky Way photography, this video is geared towards pictures of nebulae and galaxies through a telescope. Your moon photos are better than mine. I have no business telling you how to improve those. As an example, here's my latest image of the Veil Nebula, and this is what I think worked well on this one. The subject, the witch's broom, is well-framed. The filters used isolate the key wavelengths of light in the subject. Depth is achieved by reducing star size. That's a big one. The image is large and looks sharp at full resolution. Also, color enhancements help create a more dynamic scene. One of the absolute best places to review quality astro photos is Astrobin. This website hosts all types of astrophotography images, deep sky, planetary, nightscapes, from around the world, and most of them are huge, high-resolution versions you can really dig into. If you want to see some of the best astro photos in the world, it's hard to top the examples found in the image of the day section of Astrobin. So, what do all the great astrophotography images have in common? These are the seven key traits I look for. One, it's a large, high-resolution image. The image looks great at its native size captured, and the details can be enjoyed up close. Two, the composition and framing. The deep sky object is thoughtfully framed to showcase its unique beauty. Three, overall exposure time and calibration. The image has enough overall integration to reveal delicate details without overstretching and introducing excess noise. Four, star quality and size. The stars are round, small, and not overly crunchy or soft. Five, overall sharpness. The image is crisp and clear, but not jagged or over sharpened. Six, saturation and color balance. The colors are punchy and not washed out. The highlights and shadows are not clipped. Seven, depth and contrast. The deep sky object is dynamic with areas of light and darkness. It doesn't appear flat across the screen. So what if you have all of these traits checked off? Will others notice it and like it? Here's where personal preference really comes into play. You won't really know until you post it, but there are a few things I've noticed that can really captivate someone scrolling by. These days, I prefer a really colorful, perhaps oversaturated look to my images. Maybe it's because I've seen so many versions of the same targets, I don't know. But my acceptance of a really vibrant image has grown over the years and it was very gradual. I specifically remember whining about how I hated the look of oversaturated images years ago and now I'm posting images like this. What happened? And when does an image become overprocessed? This is an interesting discussion. Just five years ago, I would have considered my latest photo of the Veil Nebula to be over-processed and unnatural looking. If you ever wanna see how your personal image processing tastes evolve, just look back through your Instagram gallery. I bet you will see that your processing style gradually changes over time. Maybe your images are going in the other direction and now you produce more scientifically accurate astro photos of a higher quality. To me, whatever level of quality or style excites you to keep going is the right path to follow. Several people who saw my latest version of the Veil Nebula considered it to be oversaturated and overprocessed. 
I don't disagree with them, yet I was very intentional with the level of color and details in this photo. Have a look at a different version of the image I could have shared. This one is more natural, but it just didn't excite me. Maybe it's because I've created versions of the Veil Nebula that looked like this before, and I wanted something new. I think a huge part of the direction your image takes is from inspiration. All of my deep sky astrophotography projects start the same way. I see a stunning deep sky image shared online, and I'm inspired to create my own version of the target using my telescope and equipment in the backyard. Can you relate to this? Everyone does this, right? The equipment and processing tools used are often very different from my inspiration image, but I think this helps me put my own unique spin on the target. How will the target look at my focal length? Can I frame it in a different way? If you operate this way too, make sure you understand the amount of time, energy, and money that went into the image. If your inspiration image was taken through a 24 inch telescope from a dark remote observatory, you may be a little underwhelmed with how the object looks through your Red Cat 51. 40 hours in 03? Yep, that should do it. I know it can be easy to get jealous and say, well, if I had that set up, I could get images like that too. I'm not so sure about that. Some of the best astrophotographers I know put a ridiculous amount of planning and effort into every shot. They could make an image taken with a star tracker and a kit lens look amazing. So learn from these people and pay attention to their processing style, framing, and color palettes. My latest version of the Veil Nebula was heavily influenced by the incredible version shared by Ken Crawford many years ago. To me, this is what the Veil should look like. Don't get me started on that discussion. But to me, his version was the standard I wanted to hit. Okay, I had a lot of fun with this one and I expect to see some strong opinions in the comments. The next time you see a debate online about overprocessing or what an image should look like, I hope you share this video with them. Oh, that guy? I've seen his images. But seriously, no matter how you like to process your images, I hope you keep these seven key traits in mind. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to reprocess my latest Veil Nebula from scratch. I just found a new Pixinsight script.